let us now preview this main event, great main event. It is a rematch, ladies and gentlemen, for those who might not be aware. Uh, these two gentlemen fought back in 2016, I want to say. Yep. Was uh, this the eye poke, like the eye rip? No. Who was that? Uh, that <laughs> who was did Leon. that to Bilal? Oh, that, that was, was, Leon. That was way more recent. That's right. That's right. That's that was right. much more recent. Uh, but yeah, they fought in, in November of 2016, and uh, Luke knocked out Bilal Muhammad. Uh, in the first round, at uh, 1 minute 19 seconds of the very first round. Uh, many years later, Bilal is a very different fighter, obviously. So is Luke, but Bilal is probably night and day a different fighter than he was uh, yeah, yeah. five years ago, almost six years ago. Oh, my God. <clears throat> okay, so these two guys. Vicente Luque, still only 30 years old. Wow, that fight, he was like 24 when he knocked out Bilal back then. Wow. Uh, he is the American-Brazilian... Uh, his record overall is 21 and seven. He's on a four fight win streak heading into this weekend. Uh, most recently, uh, Darcing Michael Chiesa. Bilal Muhammad is 33 year old, Chicagoan, of course. Uh, he's on a tear himself. He has not lost since early 2019 against Jeff Neal. He has won uh, six fights, including a no contest against Leon Edwards. So he has not tasted defeat in quite some time. Uh, Mark, let me send it over to you first. Uh, what do you make of this fantastic welterweight matchup between Bilal Muhammad and Vicente Luque? So I'll give the odds first. Vicente Luque is the favorite here. He's minus 180. Bilal comes back at plus 150 as the dog. Uh, as you said, rematch from 2016, where Luque basically just dropped and finished Muhammad before the fight could even really get started. But this Bilal, compared to that one, is a totally different human, and frankly, so is Luke. So this is kind of one of those rematches where we can almost basically throw out the first fight. I don't really feel it's too relevant. Um, since that fight, Luke has gone 10-2. and two. Bilal has gone 10-1 and one with one no contest. So both guys are on incredible runs. They both look like they're on their, at their absolute peaks right now coming into this fight. And we get to put them in a cage and see who's the better man, which is what makes this sport so great. Um, What's interesting is that in the whole Vicente Luque run, he hasn't really fought anyone who's going to look to take him down the way that Bilal will, except for maybe Chiesa in his most re recent fight, but it ended so quickly we didn't really get to see how he would react to the repeated takedowns and so on. So we don't really have a great comparison for how Luque's game will stand up against the, the takedown threat that Bilal is going to bring. But then at the same time, Bilal hasn't really fought anyone capable of exploiting his let's say, non-elite striking the way that Luque can, except for Wonderboy in his most recent fight, which he managed to have almost entirely on the ground, so we didn't really get to see it. I mean, mate, you could say Leon Edwards, but that fight ended so quick with the eye poke. We didn't really get to learn a lot either. So despite the fact that they've had such extensive records in the octagon between them, I don't think they really have a great opponent comp to, to gauge how this fight is going to look against the other. Um I think the key for Bilal is going to be his pace. I think he needs to keep activity in Luque's face all fight. And I think that will only help to open up takedowns, but he definitely has to try to lead the dance. And I think the key for Luque is going to be his counter striking to make Bilal pay for that pressure, try to shake him off, and also to use his jits to, to threaten or, or get up when this thing inevitably hits the mat, because it certainly will at points. Um, I would have definitely been picking Luque here prior to Bilal's last performance. But after watching him dominate Wonderboy the way he did, I'm really torn. Um, mm. Obviously, Luke is the much more dynamic finisher. Bilal doesn't really finish fights much. Uh, he can fin Luke can finish you in a myriad of ways. I'm kind of always prone to lean toward the finisher. I do like that it's five rounds, so Luke gets to start on the feet five times. But my mind keeps getting hung up on the fact that this is taking place in the small octagon which is going to make it really hard for Luque to keep Bilal off him. And if he can't keep him off, this fight becomes, you know, difficult for him. It's how many times can he use his, his jits to threaten or to get up from the bottom, create these scrambles. And I'm sure he can in moments, but I just don't know if he can do it enough if Bilal is going to be on him all fight long. And it's crazy that this is coming down to the cage size for me. But I really think that's where I'm at. If this was in the big cage, I think I'd be prepared to pick Luque. But in the small cage, I'm going to go with Bilal. Bilal, Bilal UD for me. Okay. Okay.
Okay. Omar, what's your take and what's your pick ultimately of this fantastic welterweight bout between Luke and Muhammad? So Bilal's last two performances are the ones that have me really stuck. Uh, and I say that for, for a couple of different reasons. Damian Maya fight was interesting in the sense that Damian Maya wasn't ever able to really take him down. He wasn't able to control him. He wasn't able to get a submission the way Damian Maya generally can do. Um, Bilal was able to use his takedown defense to basically make him miss, I think, like 20 takedowns in that fight. Mm -hmm. um, and he pieced him up for it, too. This wasn't just a matter of not getting taken down and, like, moving around the cage. Like, he pieced up Damian Maya throughout that fight and, and essentially utilized his striking to get that fight done. The fight against Steven Thompson was the opposite. And I think Mark touched on this as well, where... He basically just took Steven Thompson down and controlled him for the majority of that fight. There was striking involved, but the majority of that fight was done on the mat. There were two very different performances, and, and unlike the way that we've talked that I've talked about Colby, where he needs to have both in play in order for him to be successful, I think Bilal's last two performances have proved that he is effective in both areas, single singly if he had to be. Right. If he had to just rely on his wrestling, he can do that. If he has to rely on his striking, it looks like he can do that. Vicente Luque, though, is like Mark said, a finisher. So do I believe that Bilal Muhammad is going to be taken down by Vicente Luque and submitted? Not necessarily. Um, I do think that there is a, a lot of, of worry if Bilal Muhammad takes him down because that's going to be that's going to be a whole different fight on the ground. That's not going to be Bilal Muhammad staying in guard and throwing a few punches. That's going to be Bilal Muhammad in guard, trying not to get submitted, trying to pass to get to a better position where he can't get submitted, right? Someplace like the Mount. Even if you go into side control, you're going to get darsed, right? There's like there's not a lot of places for Bilal to be relaxed or non-attentive on the ground against, against uh, Luque. It is a very difficult fight to say because I think Luque is more dangerous overall, but I also think Bilal Muhammad is more technical and a lot and more well-rounded overall. Um, if I had to put it in terms of a fight that we just saw, probably very similar to like the Julio Arce Daniel Santos fight, where Santos is very powerful, very destructive, can end you from just about anywhere, but Julio Arce was able to essentially be relatively perfect in that fight. And fight the fight that he needed to 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 put on in order for him to win against somebody like that. I think Bilal could do it. I think there's something about this Bilal that's been coming out recently that just seems to have the switch on mm -hmm. in the right spot. Um, but I do think he's it's. I think he's going to be a very tough battle. I think he's going to eat some shit in that fight, uh, and I think there are going to be some dangerous positions overall. So I, while I do think it's going to be competitive, I think Bilal comes out with a decision win. So you guys are both taking Bilal? I got to be honest. The more I'm sitting here thinking about this while Omar's talking, 25 minutes to survive in a cage with Vicente Luque is such a long fucking time. The guy is so good at finding a finish. I I, I don't know if I've ever been this torn on this podcast. I, I don't know how to pick this fight. I, yeah. I'll stick with what I said, but God, I'm struggling. Yeah, I'll be... Bilal, Bilal uh. would say that He's got 25 minutes to be in there with me. <laughs> well, I think anybody would say that. I would hope. Well, one here hopes. in the UFC. I'll be the contrary now. I'll, I'll go with Luke a gladly here. I, I like Luke A's chances. I think as strong as Bilal has looked, I think Luke a is sort of like sneaky strong uh, at welterweight. And he just has, uh, I think he's going to have the superior striking skills. And I think he is going to get Bilal out of there. I'm going to go Luke a, TKO. Fourth round. That's the pick. Uh, any other fights?